welcome to part two of our San Pedro de Atacama mini-series. Today we're going to head off and go and see a site that's about a two hour drive from San Pedro itself. Uh, so we're heading off on these beautiful roads with desert views and we're going to stop off and see a few things along the way. And tomorrow is our last day in San Pedro so we are saving the best till last and heading off to see something incredible. So yeah, stay tuned to see what we get up to. We've driven about 50 minutes south of San Pedro de Atacama and as you head south it's amazing how the landscape changes and we are now in what I'd say is true true desert. It really really feels like the surface of the moon and we've just pulled over by the side of the road because we've reached a really important marker point on planet earth, the Tropic of Capricorn. <laughs> Craig's so excited to see this sign. He's been talking about it for ages. Like, I wonder if we're going to get to the Tropic of Capricorn at any point. And I'm like, the, the what of the what? <laughs> <laughs> when we were looking and researching into places to go in the Atacama Desert, I looked at pictures and this was one of the places that came up en route to where we're headed now. But uh, yeah, how cool is that? So, latitude 23 degrees, 26 and 16. I just can't believe how quiet it is. If we just stay and say nothing. It's insane how calm and quiet it is and then you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere and nothing's around and then suddenly some huge lorry goes flying past you just as Craig tried to get out of the car a second ago this vehicle went past you <laughs> Yikes! Whoa! The sound it makes, they, they speed through so here quiet. so it's... But I'm not surprised they go fast, look how long and straight the road is yeah. and there is absolutely nothing. And the scenery when you're driving along, this is such a relaxing drive. It's just the mountains, the desert, a few random donkeys and some rock stacks. That's about it. <laughs> and if I turn around this way, you can see not quite as far this way, but equally there is just nothing coming. If you look this way, it's looking into the centre of the plateau and you've just got some salt plains down there, but mainly nothing but just Atacama Desert and big rocks and then if I turn this way so to the east of us you've just got this mountain chain or chain of volcanoes you can see the volcano that we can see in San Pedro coming all the way along and then you've just got these volcanoes and mountains along here and some of them have just got a little cloud sat on top of the peak. <laughs> For us, this scenery is just so unique. Like, this is not the kind of scenery we're used to. So we're just a bit like, whoa, what are we seeing? It's like, really it's cool. So cool. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Tropico de Capricornio. <laughs> <laughs> A weird bucket list item for Craig, I think. <laughs> so 23 crazy. degrees latitude. Well, there's only two of these. There's only the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. So it's, it's it pretty cool. cool to see this. And also because there's less land mass in the southern hemisphere of the Earth, this passes across less land mass than the Tropic of Cancer does. So you can see this from fewer places on dry land. There wow. you go. That's something I never thought I needed to know, but thank you. <laughs> What an incredible place. We've been stood here by the side of this road for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, and there's not been a single other car gone past. It is deadly silent here. But time to jump back in the car. We've got to drive about another 50 minutes to one hour uh, to the main site that we're going to see this afternoon. Craig and Kirsty, a couple who have been on the road for the past three years sharing our adventures around the world. Right now we're making our way through South America and exploring everything it has to offer. If you enjoy seeing new places and real experiences, please subscribe and welcome to the adventures of Tide Not Travellers. The Atacama Desert is located at the southern tip of the Andean Altiplano. 
which is the most extensive high plateau on Earth outside Tibet. Its position in this high altitude region is in the shadow of the snow-capped Andes Mountains, which block rainfall from the east. To the west, the upwelling of cold water from deep in the Pacific Ocean promotes atmospheric conditions that hamper the evaporation of seawater and prevent the formation of clouds and rain. This unique combination is what makes it the driest non-polar desert in the world. This barren yet beautiful place is also the oldest desert on Earth, and scientists use this land to research the dry, dusty conditions of the Atacama to reveal secrets about the key to life in other parts of the universe, such as Mars. This landscape and soil is the closest thing we have on planet Earth to that of Mars. For us, it made an incredibly unforgettable journey along the most desolate road we have ever driven, which then turned into a colorful array of life, including these tufts of grass for miles, emu, llamas, and vicuña, all with the stunning backdrop of Vulcan Minique. The Atacama Desert is a place that really has to be seen to be believed. at our next site of just outrageous scenery. We've arrived at Sala de Tala, which is high up in the mountains. I mean, we must be up at at least, I don't know, three and a half thousand, four thousand meters. Yeah. The drive here is about two hours from San Pedro de Atacama, and it's another hour and 15 minutes on from the Tropic of Capricorn sign. Yeah, so it took us a bit longer because we've obviously stopped to take pictures on the way. <laughs> but we made it! We're going to see the Piedra de Rojas, or the uh, Red Rocks, and uh, it's pretty cold here as you can tell, so we've had to layer up a little bit. We're so happy because we're actually supposed to stop in a town called Saucer. We passed it about 40 minutes ago. Yeah, and we were supposed to buy a ticket there, we didn't realise, even though the tourist lady did actually write it on there, we just noticed that, so oops. But luckily <laughs> the guy let us just pay 10,000 each here, and then we can go in. We've got an hour and a half till sunset. So let's do this. We're lucky. Yeah, so we arrived and there was a park ranger who didn't speak, well, any English at all. And he was saying, no, 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 you have to have a ticket. So we got really stressed because it's another 50 minutes back to that town and 50 minutes back to here. So we haven't got time. We wouldn't have seen this. And it seems outrageous. But like, we just drove all the way from being the data. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was an English speaking ranger inside um, and he came out and just said yes pay us the money. It was 20,000 Chilean pesos for both of us to enter. But the drive here was absolutely insane. Oh. It's, it's all about the journey. Well as much as it is the destination. We went through high altitude, there's volcanoes, there's Wanakos, llamas, emus, yeah, sort of crazy volcano rock formations and we <laughs> love the little tufts of grass that you see by the side of the road. We call them troll hair because yeah. they just like little, they, the they look like little tufts of troll hair sticking up out the ground. <laughs> but, I, like, uh, I think they wake up at night and run around and do a little troll thing. <laughs> as soon as the sun goes down. This place looks incredible. We had to choose with the amount of time we had left because of the high winds yesterday. We lost time. We had to choose between coming here to Sala de Tala or going to Laguna Caxa. And from looking online at pictures and things, we chose here. And yeah. by the looks of it, it's not disappointing. <laughs> yeah. I think we'd be happy with either choice, but you know, when you're in this part of the world, you've got a limited amount of time. The distances yeah. are so vast. We are happy to so have made vast. it. All this uh, Piedra Roja everywhere. <laughs> My awful Spanish. Let's go and see it. <laughs> Thank you. 
We're just walking along this vast network of paths over to Piedra Rocas, which is the red rock pavement over the edge of the salt flat. You can see all of this, all volcanic formations. And then just look over there, those beautiful whites and turquoisey blue colors with the mountains or volcanoes in the background. It's just such epic scenery up here. Yeah, I can't get over the colours, this is insane. The landscape. I feel like I keep saying that a lot, but <laughs> I am <am> speechless. <laughs> like ice and I could believe that it is ice because it's so cold but I'm not sure whether that's ice or salt <laughs> either way this is insane and the sun just going straight across it here yeah the contrast of Piedras Rojas this red rock and then the whites and the turquoisey blue colors of the salt lagoon is insane and just have the sun going down and reflecting off the salt surface is just insane this is beautiful, I'm glad we came here. Okay. If I turn around, so you can just see the rest of the Salt Lagoon and the Red Rock pavement. It's beautiful. Saladatala is a 46 square kilometer salt flat that sits at around 4,000 meters above sea level. It is also referred to as Piedra Rojas, which directly translates to red rocks. Reaching the view across the water means walking straight towards the icy wind, but the silence, the beauty and the colors make the biting cold worthwhile. found out that actually the altitude that we are at right now is 4,500 meters so that explains why it felt so much colder and crazier coming up here it's actually the same altitude as the place we're going tomorrow so yeah higher than we thought we thought it was like three and a half thousand but yeah worth it look at this view it's insane especially being here at golden hour the color of this place is insane the red rock and then these whitey saline colors go into like aqua and turquoise colors. They've got like kind of a sandy beachy color. And then the green on the dark color rock. Just never seen anything like it. Absolutely stunning. And then the beautiful blue clear sky as well, which we are very thankful for after yesterday's weather. <sighs> Just losing the sun behind the mountain you can see the shadow moving across but just check those colors across the lagoon and on the side of that volcano such an incredible place run out of superlatives for this area just as a European seeing places like this it's just such different landscape to what we're used to vast vast beautiful landscapes.
so lucky to see more incredible South American landscapes. What a place. But now we've got two hours, we've got to zip back to San Pedro um, because we've got something pretty special planned for this evening. So let's go. The drive back along these desert roads were equally, if not more stunning than the drive out. Watching the sky changing over this vast landscape was a key reminder of the cliché saying that it's all about the journey, not just the destination. Although the destinations in this part of the world are pretty mind-blowing too. Join us for our final adventure here in the Atacama Desert next week. Thanks for watching and feel free to say hello in the comments section. We love reading them.